A very good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Jacob, and this is Michael. Hello. Very good afternoon. I hope you didn't have any problems in finding our office. Let me take it. Bye. Hey, please have a seat. Uh, we're really, really glad that you could join us today to discuss your case. Uh, could I offer you a glass of water? Uh, Michael, would you like a glass of water? Sure, thank. So, as Jacob already mentioned, I'm Michael Kubi, I'm the partner at the firm. And he's my colleague, Jacob Smith. He's the senior associate. He has a niche. Uh, he has a niche in environmental law, particularly dealing with the pollution control boards. And he'll be your primary point of contact. So, before we begin with the session, how would you like us to address you? You can address him by my first name, which is Prina. Prina, right. So, before we begin with the session, I just want to explain why the both of us are here today. So initially, when we first meet a client, we want to bring both of our experiences to the table. And in case you are unable to reach out to one of us for whatsoever reason, uh, you have someone at the firm that you can trust and you can, and who's well versed with the facts of your case. Along with the firm's primary numbers, uh, you'll have our business cards. You can reach out to us anytime if there's anything pressing or urgent. Right? Yeah. This is Michael's business card, and uh, this is Mike. During the session, uh, it's usually the attorneys who are asking the question. But if at any time you feel that you use a term that you don't understand, uh, feel free to uh, stop that and ask for a clarification. Although we'll try our best not to use any legal jargon that attorneys are usually infamous for. Uh, thank you so much, Michael. First and foremost, uh, Prina, let me assure you that anything you say during the course of this interview and any further interaction that we have is uh, will be confidential and uh, kept private. Uh, the reason why I want to inform you this at the get-go is that uh, Michael and I want you to be as honest and as forthcoming as possible. Uh, this is this helps us better understand your case and then therefore we'll be able to better advise you. Uh, then another thing that we uh, have already checked the roster of clients that, the, that we have at the firm. There doesn't seem to be any conflict of interest that's apparent at the moment. However, in due course of uh, this interview or any further interview, uh, that we have, if we do, uh, if we become aware of any such conflict of interest, we'll stop proceedings right there and then. Uh, we'll be happy to give you a list of excellent attorneys that can take up your case, and we'll also destroy all the recordings and notes and files that we have on your case. Uh, this is the retainer agreement that we have at the firm, so this underlines our charges in case you do decide to take our uh, counsel. It also lays down the criterion for financial aid, uh, so in case you do meet that criterion, the firm would take your case on pro bono, uh, on a pro bono basis. Michael and all the other partners are really big on taking cases on pro bono as well. And it also covers the complaints procedure. Uh, although I, I assure you that with our hard work, you, you won't have to utilize that hopefully. Uh, coming to your issue at hand, our, uh, our staff informed us that you had an issue concerning sound pollution by loudspeakers. Could you go into a detail about what the issue is? Uh, leave no stone unturned. Even if you think it's irrelevant, we'd, we'd be more than happy to listen to you. Okay, so I'm a president at Residents Association at Chelem. Uh, Chelem is a small town, but it has a huge, it has a huge beachfront. So uh, Chelem, it was originally developed by the uh, fishermen at that area, and it gradually developed into a small town. So in order to boost the tourism, the government, uh, the state government, it came up with an initiative to allow shacks uh, right at the beach. Okay. So every year, the state government uh, auctions a uh, license for running the shacks. But over time, as the tourism grew, uh, uh, they, we, we attracted a lot of uh, tourists from both uh, domestic as well as international tourists. And so the government allowed to run shacks throughout the year, except in monsoon area. The beach was heavily marketed on social media. So one thing is that, as we gain eminence, the beach gained eminence, the license fee for running the shack, it was increased. And it led to an unhealthy competition between the shack owners so as to attract more tourists. So they started to find out new ways, new innovative ways, you know, to attract more tourists like karaoke nights, live music and candlelight dinner till 2am. Apart from that, they also used to play loud music every other day. Every other sack they used to play loud music and late night parties were pretty, uh, it was very rampant. But it posed severe inconvenience to the people who were residing nearby to the beach. Like uh, haphazardous parking by the tourists, 
other unscrupulous activities but the most important issue was the sound pollution which was created mm -hmm. by these loudspeakers which were played every other day by these shacks the residents they were not able to sleep properly the children they were not able to study it created a huge ruckus for them so we made several complaints to the police as well as the panchayat that they were just playing a blame game the police they blamed the panchayat for granting such a license for running these shacks and the panchayat it blamed the police for giving this uh, for giving permission for such loudspeakers so uh, it was creating a uh, very uh, it was creating a lot of inconvenience for us several health hazards also also one important thing is that we have a senior citizens residential complex mm -hmm. which is very close to the beach and you know that such loud music it can cause a number of health related issues as far as i know a uh, loudspeaker is permitted till 10 pm but yeah. in our cases the playing it every other day till 2 am how can government permit such a nuisance how right. can they permit it till 10 pm at the same time the children are not able to study properly and it is creating uh it is creating an ruckus for us uh we are not able to do our day to day activities at the same time i got to know that they are going to stone uh, arrange an edm music fest right. right at the chelam beach which will be for 3 to 4 days i would like to know whether uh, such law permits whether such law which is permitting this uh, um, loud music till 10 pm can we challenge it at the same time what can we do for music beyond 10 pm i would right. like to know your uh, i would like to consult you for the same also i came to know that your firm it it has expertise in environmental law i really need your help or let's uh, see the problem is that our association we uh, we don't have the requisite forms hmm. so i would like you to please be with me right firstly thank you so much for being so forthcoming i understand that it's quite a difficult situation for you and the rest of the members of the rwa uh coming to uh, a few questions that we have and then we'll come to your priority interest and answering a lot of the legal questions that you have uh you mentioned these uh, shacks have gotten approval what body have they gotten approval from uh the panchayat the panchayat see uh, initially they got license from the state the state is permitting them the license actually they auction the license every other year right Uh, was there any understanding between the state and the RWA was there any formal communication made in this regard pertaining to the licenses earlier when the area was not as popular uh, or okay. right uh so could you give us a sort of a timeline into understanding uh since when have these shacks operated and when since when has it become a particular problem uh particularly to your the residents of your uh, association uh the shacks have been operating for uh, 8 9 years 9 years uh but it well, it, it has been operating from a very long time but it gained popularity in uh, 8 9 years we can say more because there has been an increase in the tourist actually mm. the main problem is that as there has been an increase in the tourist they have been indul they have been finding out more and more ways so as to attract them like loud music as i narrated mm. earlier also and it has been creating a problem for us Uh, just a follow up to what Jacob asked. Uh, when did you mention that they started promoting karaoke and live music nights? Uh, did this also happen now uh, in the past eight to nine years? Yeah, but the problem increased since last uh, three four years. Right, majorly. Right, and uh, do they have any kind of uh, licenses to to uh, use loudspeakers and so on? Yeah, they they are saying that law permits them to play license till 10 p.m. But they don't have any license beyond 10 p.m. Beyond 10. PM. I don't think so. They permit license, right? As per my limited knowledge. That's completely all right. Are you aware about the intensity of the sound levels or uh, that they play the music at? You mentioned that it's loud music, uh, but is it at some certain extent or uh, to some certain uh, limit that they play? Uh, what I can say that it's it's very loud actually. and it's right. like the places we are even uh, one two three kilometers away even they are disturbed by all right that's very concerning uh and uh, yeah, this is a slightly technical question so feel free uh, even if you don't know this uh do you know what kind of uh, zones are these the you mentioned chelam is a small town so has it been given uh, a residential status or commercial status under any law that you're aware of 
uh and not well that's completely all right this is a follow up to that you i did mention that there's on there are residents that are living nearby children are there and senior residents that are also there is there any school also nearby uh, within the radius 3 kilometers yes that is right good could you tell us the name of that school the school is kv public school kv public school right and uh, you mentioned there's a senior citizens uh, uh specific complex that are there uh is that uh like a casual setup or is is that also registered as perhaps a assisted living facility no it is not it is it is a casual it's it's a casual setup that's all right uh you also mentioned something about healthcare hazards if you could just elaborate a little bit on that because you mentioned the problem has been going on for 3 or 4 years if there have been any incidents uh, that have caused uh, any healthcare hazard to any of the uh, members of the society so first of all uh, there are number of uh, number of residents in this area who have heart related issues and we know loud music can be very, uh, can be serious issue for them so our most uh, most um, uh, most important concern is heart related issues right. heart related issues of course at the same time this uh, loud music can be very irritating for our right. ear as well right uh, you mentioned that there's a some sort of uh, problem with bad parking as well yeah um could you elaborate a little bit more that on that if they have licenses or not and what's the agreement so far no uh, actually they are parking right in front of resi- uh, the resi- uh, the residents houses yeah. so if they i don't certainly they don't have a permit for right. that so it is a problem for the residents as well right um michael with your permission i think it's a good time to sort of summarize the thing so that we're all on the same page so uh, you're the president for the uh, residents welfare association of chelum a uh, small town it's by the beach a very lovely town uh, my idea uh, the panchayat to promote tourism has now giving been giving shacks a lot of permits that this, uh, the state government has also given approval through Uh, uh auctions that they've done and with in the last 3 or 4 years particularly there's been a large influx of domestic and international tourists that have come up uh these shacks and restaurants have big social media presences so they're further uh, attracting a lot of people uh the license fee has shot up in the recent years which has led to uh, a, a really bad uh, competition in that in in that area which needs to uh, you know uh, shack strength to try new schemes loud music karaoke night uh, you know calling musicians and so on and so forth to get more customers uh, then you try to go to the police as well you've tried to go to your uh, panchayat leaders as well they haven't been of any help unfortunately uh, there is a lot of health hazards as you mentioned particularly heart related health hazards for senior citizens living there children living there and uh, they've claimed that they have under law they have the permission to play loud music till 10 pm and even beyond that uh, they not responding and there's an EDM concert that's going to happen very shortly which you're also dreading quite a bit uh, a particular consideration that you mentioned was your rwa isn't that financially well off yeah. uh, and you won't you can't invest a lot of money into this is there any fact that i missed out upon something i misunderstood uh, is there anything you would want to add to for us to better understand this the uh, issue uh i would like to uh stress on one point my main concern right now is to you know stop them from uh, first i would like to stress on the point that these contain where this uh, law or this law, right. is it like it can be like uh, question it that's 10 pm law mm-hmm. and also what could we do to stop it beyond beyond 10, 10 pm which they are doing daily all right all right Uh, I just wanted to ask a uh, follow up uh, to what Jacob uh, stated uh, when is it that the EDM night is organized or because that would also help us have time in on it is going to be organized on 28 to 31st December 28 to 31st December have any such previous concerts or festivals taken place no oh, nothing yet. so up uh, through as far as i can understand this is this problem has been plaguing you for quite a while other than which trying to uh, file a complaint with the police and uh, trying to complain with the panchayat have you tried any other recourse before coming to us no nothing sir and uh, did the police uh, refuse to uh, register your fir 
No, they did not. Actually, for a short period of time, they also uh, stopped the sex from playing the music beyond 10 p.m. But uh, after some time, it started again. Uh, could you mention the time period uh, when this happened? Uh, it happened uh, five months ago. So five months ago, they stopped and then when did they resume? They resumed after 15 days again. All right. So around July, they stopped for about two weeks. And uh, then did you approach the police again? To... Uh, I approached, but they were playing the blame game again. Right. right. Um, I understand that you might not be privy to this information. But do you know if there was any uh, exchange of money or anything like that with the police and shack owners and so on? But I understand, I understand. All right. Uh, has there been any uh, sort of agreement between the RW or the uh, uh, sharks that are there or some sort of understanding that's there? Or any communications that might have taken place in this regard because since uh, they're the ones causing the trouble? No, All right. Uh, so there's been no direct communication with the shacks or any of the shack owners or restaurant owners? No, that's not it. Uh, Only uh, from police and panchayat. Right. Uh, what is uh, so? What about the panchayat? They blame the police, but other than that, did they take any uh, specific action or direct you anywhere? No, they did not. Right. And have you tried to approach the district committee or the state uh, pollution. pollution control committee? No, committee? Okay. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we have a pretty good idea of the facts involved, unless you want to add anything else. Uh, we, we wanted you to know what your primary interests are and what your priority is in this situation. You already mentioned that you just want to stop the music and particularly perhaps even stop the EDM concert that's going to happen. Uh, so could you let us know what your both short term and long term priorities are with regards to this issue? My short term priority is EDM concert because uh, obviously since it's a concert they are going to play loud music and my long term priority is so as to stop this loud music altogether. Alright. So uh, you per se do not have a problem with the shacks being on the beach side just the music part of it is what right? It's the sound pollution which is called right. due to the issue. And additionally also the parking issues are something that's secondary. And uh, could it you give us an understanding of what's the rough distance between the residential colony and the beach that we can uh, perhaps make a mind map of how the... Uh, it's right? roughly, uh, it's under the radius of one kilometer. Four. Right. Also, additionally, you mentioned uh, that they started a uh, in, in that they started a social media page as well. Uh, so, have they posted about the EVM concert on there as well? Have they been promoting it? Right. Right. Uh, so, has uh, uh, the pancha the when you approach the panchayat, um, they blame the police. Uh, did you then inform them that you've already gone to the police and this has happened and the police has stopped intervening and they in fact blame the panchayat for giving the uh, permissions? Yes, right. On the Has the uh, panchayat communicated to you that uh, certain permissions were given by them to the shacks? Mm. Right. Yes, they told us. All right. And uh, again, uh, I'm so sorry to ask you this and you might not be aware. But uh, has there been any exchange of uh, any monetary amounts between the panchayat leaders and uh, the shag owners, if you're aware of that? I'm not, not going like to So, uh, I think we just, uh, we we only have a few, uh, five to seven minutes left for the session. So, I think we go over the rough uh, idea of what we have in mind. We'll of course, send you a detailed emails and communications about that later on. Uh, so, I think in the short run, uh, we can perhaps uh, uh, approach the magistrate who does have uh, this does have powers to stop public nuisance because this does seem clearly mm -hmm. a public nuisance. There's uh, health risk at, uh, involved as well. In the short term, that would I suppose uh, stop uh, stop uh, stop the issue. Uh, and while of course we can uh, approach the court and uh, go through uh, the court route, but you mentioned that that you do have a financial uh, issue with regards to the, the solving of this dispute and also the fact that you want it to be resolved quickly. So I think perhaps approaching the shack owners and shack association directly 
um, with something like a negotiation of sorts might be the way to go here because that will a allow both parties to come to a table discuss uh, discuss a, a future that's agreeable to both and also be cost and time effective subsequently i think uh, we could also approach the state pollution control mm -hmm. boards uh, since they do seem to be in a violation of the um, norms that have been prescribed by the board uh, how you really need to look into that as well since you're not entirely uh, aware of, of the technical uh, situation right. uh, does this seem like something that you'd want to do uh, come to a table with them yeah right, right. Uh, as jacob already mentioned that uh, since you mentioned that uh, your rw is also uh, financially weak uh, would there be a possibility that you would be looking at some sort of arrangement between the shack owners uh, and uh, maybe you could look at the potential solution wherein uh, maybe they're uh, even re remunerating you or something of that sort. Yeah, but uh, isn't our main concern right. regarding the soft right. pollution? So right? you're not looking for any compensa monetary compensation? Yeah, they would like to have a compensation, but that right. is not a prime right. priority. I mean, uh, is there a, a shack owners association of sorts or is there a collective or, or, or individual owners? Individual owners. Uh, could you mention how many uh, shack owners are there or this? As of now, there are at least 10 shack owners. At least 10. So, uh, the primary reason that we're suggesting this uh, out-of-court settlement is that uh, their existence isn't a problem for you. It's just the loud music that's particularly gotten worse in the last three to four years. Uh, are there any uh, neighboring RWAs that have faced similar problems? Because you mentioned three to four kilometers, the music travels, parking issues must have also been there. So... Are there any other neighboring RWAs that can perhaps join you in your cause? No, you are not aware of that. Okay. Right. Uh, I believe we're just uh, nearing the end of the session. We only have a few minutes. So uh, we could just uh, discuss the options. Uh, of course. So I think uh, initially we can uh, go to both uh, either uh, approach the magistrate uh, for a conditional stay on the public nuisance issue. Or, uh, but that would, however, antagonize the shack owners to an extent, and they may not want to come to the table. Uh, that's why we, while that is a that would effectively stop, stop things in its path for the moment, but uh, it would antagonize them, and that's our primary concern. So, do you uh, have any input in this regard, or does 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 do either of these options make sense for you? Yeah, right. Right. right uh Subsequent to that, I think uh, even prior to that, maybe you could even try reaching out to the shack owners individually and try to resolve this uh, issue directly yeah. and uh, bring them to the negotiation table. Obviously, that option is always there. But considering the fact that you have a short-term priority of uh, stopping the Indian night as well, I think every will, everything will need to be set in motion really quickly. Yeah, we even, as a matter of fact, as one of the uh, negotiation uh, terms, we'll even ask the uh, shack owners to stop posting on their social media so that uh, the num the people showing up for the EDM concert would also be stopped and the event is altogether uh, cancelled and we can even get in touch with them uh, about uh, perhaps relocating their concert because uh, their monetary loss isn't something that's going to benefit you at all. Uh, since we're only left with a couple of minutes, um, I'll just summarize a few things here. Um, I think this has been a very, very fruitful consultation session. Mostly that's because of you because very rarely are we able to cover this much ground on a first meeting and uh, all the credit goes to you because you've been so forthcoming and un we understand that you know coming to two uh, strangers and discussing your problems can be quite tough um, I think we have a good understanding of the, the factual matrix of the case and your interests also you've uh, informed of uh, informed us so I'll get in touch with you shortly uh, and send across a list of documents that we'll require your RWAs or other licenses that you uh, sent out a copy of the complaint, so on and so forth. I'll give prop, send you a proper list. I'll also send you a minutes of the meeting that uh, what about what you discuss. You can perhaps show it to other RWA members and so on. And uh, I'll even send you a document which gives an overview of the strategy that we discussed. Of course, of course, I explained it thoroughly. And once we receive the documents from you and we do our necessary due diligence, uh, we'll take the case forward and perhaps we can decide on another date we can meet. Uh, Something short. Something on a short, on a very short timeline because this is a, a very, very urgent issue. You can perhaps come with other RW, uh, RW officials of uh, Chillum. Uh, the, how does uh, a couple of weeks or rather next week sound? Uh, does that work for you? Yeah. Great. Uh, it was great having you in our office today. It was really great having you here. Uh, yeah, presenting the interests of all yeah. of the residents. Uh, that was That's it. Really noble, noble gods. Uh, yeah. Right. Sounds great. Awesome.
And it will just stop you on the top. Let's um Tajin Basin. Eat shop. Has the time for the post consultation started? Right. Thank you. Uh, Michael, so what do you think about the case? I think uh, it's a rather intriguing case because this has been going on for quite some years and it's only getting worse uh, considering the interests of all of the people that are there, the children, the uh, senior residents also and the upcoming EDM concert. I think we really need to move uh, really quickly in this matter. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, our first uh, request should be A, verifying the documents that uh, ma'am gives us, we'll also need to look at the licenses given to uh, these check owners because it's quite perplexing that uh, they've issued uh, commercial licenses in, in so, so near a school, which is right. clearly not allowed uh, uh, no, under law and even uh, a residential area that has a proper RWA. So I do feel there is something fishy going on there uh, without uh, getting ahead of myself. Right. I think uh, there's also a possibility that maybe we could reach out to the nodal officer of the area. Uh, usually uh, the state... Um, the state uh, pollution control board has uh, an online platform wherein uh, one can file an application in regards to that. That could also be one of our first steps that we could take. Yeah, uh, I think uh, a subsequent thing that we should do uh, is uh, if everything f uh, falls through, we can approach the uh, magistrate under 133 CRPC to right. uh, to have a conditional order for the stay of public nuisance because this is c causing heart concerns, and I think that's. Right. Any 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 magistrate would see that there is a clear case here, especially uh, considering that the uh, client also mentioned that even within a radius of three kilometers, the music was audible. Yeah, and they're uh, barely a kilometer away, so right. And I was really good to see that they didn't have any malice towards the shack owners. They don't have a problem with their existence. Uh, it's just that the sound pollution bit and the right. work, uh, concerning about concern about the parking is their main issue. Because I do feel in these cases, a lot of times uh, they become antagonistic, which sort of takes out the out-of-court settlement right. mode. Uh, additionally, I also think uh, we could reach out to the State Pollution Control Board, as I already mentioned, uh, because in uh, certain instances, they have some sound meters that are installed uh, in regards to the decibel uh, limits that are there uh, given by them under the regulations, state regulations. Yeah, they will uh, definitely investigate the issue. So, uh, I think uh, we'll probably have to decide between two approaches here. One would be approaching the, uh, if we go to the magistrate and get a conditional order, that would uh, put the sort of the parties at, at, at odds. Right. And uh, and then the second option is reaching out to the shack owners directly and helping them understand that this is, uh, this is what is on the table. And uh, we can perhaps use uh, the conditional order as a, uh, as a uh, as sort of something to bring them to the negotiation mm -hmm. table because there really isn't a reason why both of these uh, parties c can uh, survive uh, uh, can live together uh, can function together in Chelum but it's just over the last three or four years this has happened because she mentioned that these shacks have been open for right. donkey's years now Additionally, I also think uh, considering the time-bound nature of the case uh, maybe you could ask maybe you could schedule a negotiation with them and try to uh, cover the interests of all of the parties involved and uh, try to come to an amicable solution. Maybe pursuant to that, if things don't settle between the parties, then maybe you could uh, take the other route and uh, reach out to the magistrate or the state position control board. Uh, you feel uh, negotiation is the way to go or mediation? I think uh, negotiation uh, would be ideal considering the fact that they haven't had any prior communication directly with the shack owners. So, yeah, I think, yeah, because I think typically mediation would be better if they were more at odds right. and they needed a third pa a third neutral party. But since they've not had any of that, um, do you think do you think the uh, shack owners would be so easily willing to let go of their interest? Uh, I think uh, we would need to consider their interests, obviously, but uh, considering that uh, this is also a case of the public interest at large, considering mm -hmm. there are senior residents, there are people who have health, uh, healthcare issues uh, pertaining uh, to the, uh, especially the heart-related issues. I think uh, we do need to uh, focus on our clients' interests mm -hmm. as well. I think uh, uh, I think the image is right. should be uh, stopping the EDM concert and sorry, the music uh, thing. 
uh, do you think, and I, I didn't want to ask it in front of ma'am, uh, I really do think there has been some exchange of favors or signing law, uh, something going on with them getting this commission because the fact that they're so close to a school, they're so close to a residential area, uh, and it's and I'm sure there are other uh, neighboring art of news as well that we can open. And I don't know how uh, how would ma how ma'am would feel about that. We can was asked ma'am. There's also uh, the possibility that the uh, uh, licenses that have been granted or they they're being violated uh, in regards to the term condition that are there initially. Yeah, because even if they have got this uh, written authority written permission by the authority. There is a clear uh, blanket ban from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. and that's been reaffirmed even by the Supreme mm -hmm. Court in Bittadan 5, hearing and so on and so forth. Um, and even I think uh, they mentioned that because uh, they have uh, fests and all also, even there is a restriction in the Rule 5a on uh, on so on those as well. Right. Uh, even uh, the fact that they mentioned that the music is uh, being run throughout the day, uh, there's this limit of uh, six hours that is usually prescribed under uh, state uh, rules that are there for, uh, for noise pollution. Uh, like uh, prohibition of loud, loud music is also there. So even extended periods of such uh, music and such loud noise, it's uh, really uh, intriguing. So uh, I think we have sort of two clear uh, paths we can go towards. One is immediately inviting them for a negotiation to at least uh, because the faster we call them for a negotiation, the faster they can sh uh, shift out their EDM concert because understanding that they are they are a, they are a come they are profit running businesses profit run businesses they need time to shift out the EDM concert so if that is one route and the second route is, uh, is of course the condition order followed by then we can perhaps have a, a complaint under Rule Seven to the authority right. as they've to the, uh, officer. To the nodal, uh, nodal of, uh, officer or the authority designated. Uh, that they have contravened the present rules uh, in the right. air, uh, noise pollution rules. Subsequently, if uh, all of this does not work out in any instance, mm -hmm. we could always approach the court as well, considering that there are precedents in this regard. Also, the fact uh, that the quicker we try to resolve this, the balance of convenience would be in our favor, since there are quite a few weeks left for the uh, event to happen. Most definitely, I think that that's what. But uh, considering that there are health, uh, really, uh, heart related right. issues, there's uh, large no, well, senior, citizens, well. senior citizens that there, there are, there are children who aren't able to study. I think the balance of convenience is very much in our favor. Uh, but I think a problem that I do feel would come up if we go towards the litigation route would be that they said that they don't have funds and check right. owners, they do seem, uh, they may pool their funds together and they would be able to extend the litigation to a certain extent and then there'll be appeals and so on. Right. So I think Primarily. the, the out-of-court right. settlement option does seem uh, would be better for them. So just to uh, just to summarize things because I know you have a meeting in a few minutes. So uh, I think uh, I'll first ask ma'am for the list of documents. Uh, I'll mention all the relevant documents uh, uh, and then send her the minutes of the meeting. Then I will give her both courses of uh, of action. I'll of course tell that we recommend that you do this, right. but I do think that. Uh, informing them and explaining them what the recourses are is crucial because they they do seem to know what uh, what they exactly want and what they need to need to get done. Uh, so uh, following which, I think once we're done with the uh, due diligence of the documents involved, we can perhaps uh, have another meeting with them as early as next week. I think we can definitely find right. time in the schedule and uh, meet the other RWA members and then. Uh, start with reaching out to the other side. Additionally, uh, along with the strategy document, uh, do include a timeline as well as to mm -hmm. how much time each recourse would take so that Definitely. you can uh, choose the best possible solution for the client as per their needs. Yeah, I think uh, the litigation route would take much longer even if eventually... Right. But for the long-term interest, uh, it might be possible. Uh, yeah, uh, but I think even the complaint route, uh, do you think if there has been some quid pro quo with the authorities involved, do you think that they'll they'll be willing to start investigations and st put a ho put a stop on these things. Uh, I believe the panchayat would, would not be involved if we reach out to mm -hmm. the state pollution control board directly. Uh, the nodal officer would be the one who would be yeah. doing the investigation and they'd be uh, considering the levels of the decibels and they'd also consider the fact that there's a school in the locality. I think all of those mm -hmm. factors taken into consideration, we should expect a positive reply from their side as well. Yeah, I think a proper investigation into the technical standards laid down under the act would help us and better understand what the actual situation is. But from the facts that they've given us, it does seem to be a 
uh, very clear cut case wherein they uh, overstep the bounds uh, in the situation at hand. I think that's about it. Is there anything right. else we should cover? I think that's about it. Uh, Mr. Inna was very forthcoming with the facts as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think uh, I'll get in touch with them with this with the the list of documents, the the maintenance of the meeting, and the strategy proposed. And I'll uh, also be sure to CC you in the meeting. Right. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, good. Thank you. Are there any questions? See if the honorable judges have any questions for us. Ah, uh, uh, for the other team. Call. Uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, for the other team. Uh, okay. Uh, right, right, right. If, I'm not sure if that's in procedure, so I just looked at the organizer. Yeah. Just, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to be in front of the bench. Uh,